Picture this, you've waited a good few minutes to get into a match of Identity 5, when finally, you team up. But as you take a closer look at your teammates, you begin to realize, are those default characters? And do they all ready up at the same time? You've just found yourself in a bot lobby. Bots have always been an annoying part of the game. There's something that all Identity 5 players have had to sit through after a bad loss streak. But hey, at least it gives players a good chance to get back on their feet and get some character deductions done. Well, until now. As of Season 30, the developers have made the change to allow bots to autofill lobbies after waiting in queue for a certain amount of time, which means that if queues are long, there's a chance you'd never actually team up with any real players. And despite the obvious buzzkill that bots are in a multiplayer game, their AI isn't exactly the greatest either. <laughs> Why did he just give me the side eye? And at the same time, if you're playing characters such as Magician or Faro Lady, which rely on confusing the hunter, well, good luck because the bots are always able to pathfind to your location. So this whole situation had me wondering, what other changes have been controversial in Identity 5? Well, let's take a look. Identity 5 has always been a game that's been argued upon, whether one side is stronger than the other, whether characters need to be buffed or nerfed, but a common view shared among many players is that the game has a pretty considerable lean towards survivor strength. That's why when Season 21 came around, the last thing hunters wanted to see was Identity 5's equivalent of Dead Hard. The season introduced an entire change to the survivor persona web, which included the addition of the trait flywheel effect to replace the old spectator trait. Upon release, survivors were able to dash 5 meters for 0.5 seconds with this trait, being invincible for the entire duration. The introduction of flywheel effect left many hunter players frustrated, as they felt like the devs were making an already disadvantaged role feel worse to play. This was especially a problem for hunters with damage abilities that suffered from long cooldowns, such as Smiley Face. Luckily, the developers realized the strength of this perk pretty quickly after it's released, and nerfed it to mostly what we have today. If you're an OG Identity 5 player, you'll probably remember this one. Prior to Season 12, rocket chairs appeared with barbed wire wrapped around them instead of the padded bar we know today. Instead of the hunter swinging down the bar to lock survivors into the rocket chair, the hunter would strap them in with barbed wire. Due to Chinese censorship, however, this design feature was removed and replaced with the more commonly known padded bar. This change was not particularly liked by the community, saying that the new rocket chairs looked silly and didn't fit the lore of the game at all. Still to this day, many players wish for this feature to come back. It's no question that Identity 5 can be a bit nonsensical when it comes to character adjustments and this one is a good example. Imagine being one of the few players to master what is commonly known to be one of the most difficult hunters to play, then having all your knowledge and skill ruined by one simple change. In Season 16, the developers decided to change how Dream Witch worked. Prior to this update, her playstyle was known for being one of stealth and surprise attacks, using your invisible main body to creep up and spawn followers on unknowing survivors. However, with this character adjustment, survivors were now alerted by a notification on their status effect bar whenever Dream Witch's main body was within 20 meters of them, which means that you can no longer use stealth to your advantage, and instead have to deal with the survivor running away and reaching a safe location before you could even get a follower close to them. This made what was already a very difficult hunter to play even harder and less rewarding than before. Not only were Dream Witch players very upset with this change, but many survivor players sided with them, expressing their belief that playing such a hard character should be more rewarding and that the notification took all of the fun out of facing the character because they would know what to expect. The final change I'll be going over is the lore revamp that took place during the Ashes of Memory event in early 2023. This event took what very little lore the game had and attempted to turn it into an entire narrative. The problem with this, however, is that it completely went back on the original lore the players had become attached to over the years and rewrote it into a non-thematically fitting story that honestly just wasn't very interesting. This was especially a strange choice considering that Identity 5's previous lore event had taken place just a few years ago in 2021, which attempted to add on to the original lore and was very well received by players. The community complained that the new story for the game didn't make any sense, especially when taking the old lore into consideration. And in addition, the Ashes of Memory event near completely removed the dark and mysterious vibe that the game had prior to the update. That's all for today, but are there any other changes that occurred in this game that you or other players just hated? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe and like, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.